Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about this 3D printed desk lamp that I've made. So this is going to touch on several different things. This is primarily going to be an electronics video, but it's also a 3D printing video because after all I did 3D print this thing. I found this thing on Thingiverse. Here's a link to the original Thingiverse page. And it, it looked interesting, you know, it looked big. I wanted to kind of print something big with lots of parts, uh, see what happens. Uh, so I decided I was going to do it, but I, I wanted to put my own spin on it. So during this, we're going to talk about cost current power supply that I built. We're going to talk about a DC load that I used to uh, test the power supply. We'll talk about the COP modules a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about the 3D printing. So lots of stuff going to be in here. So first of all, let's kind of let's kind of look at these COP modules. You can see them there. I think can you see them on the camera? Yeah, you should be able to kind of see what's going on. These things are a whole bunch of um, LEDs bonded to a board. You can find these on eBay really, really cheap, like uh, less than $2 per uh, cob panel. So it's like less than four bucks worth of lighting there. Um, right now I have the voltage turned down really low and you will see some artifacts. Uh, some of the LEDs are more brightly lit than others. Part of that is because these things are wired um, in parallel but um, with a bus running through. So this one's kind of getting a little bit more current. The bus runs through and then it powers that one. But crank the brightness up. I'm not going to notice any disparity between those two panels. It's just when I've got this cranked down like super low and it's about, about ready to power off. Yeah, you can see kind of the LEDs, you know, some of them do come on before others. Uh, but anyway, these cob panels, uh, if you look at BigClive.com, um, I'll link that video in someplace. Uh, he went through a lot on these panels, testing them out, measuring the, the current and the voltage and such to drive these things. You can find these things on eBay. They're called the like, 12 to 24 volt, 10 watt uh, cob panels. You'd be probably be crazy to run them at 10 watts. They get, they get pretty hot at 10 watts. Uh, the most I'm putting is like between five and seven watts through them, and it's it's super bright. Anyway, I think Big Clive recommended using a dropping resistor and a 12 volt supply. Um, am I gonna use a dropping resistor? Of course not. Um, if you watch any of my videos, you know that I tend to complicate things, so I'm gonna find a more complicated way to do that. And that more complicated way is gonna be using a custom um, constant current, constant voltage power supply. So I do have a separate video on this constant current constant voltage power supply um, using an LM2576. I came up with an idea to use an op amp um, to measure through a current sense resistor and then turn the um, apply that to the feedback pin on the regulator to shut the regulator down in order to achieve constant current. So that's, that's what this board is in here. I'll link my original video where I go through this whole circuit on the whiteboard kind of as I, as I figured it out. Um, I'll do a little bit of schematic review in this, but really, if you want to know more about the constant current supply, watch the other video. So I did change a few things in the original uh, model from the Thingiverse version. Um, so one thing I added, um, my printer wasn't big enough to print this whole thing in one piece, so I kind of cut it in half. I don't know if you can quite see the seam, uh, but it is cut um, in half. I also so I kind of got cocked there, but I added this end cap on the back. Um, because you don't uh, you don't want to end up looking edge on on this super bright, so it kind of gives you a little bit of shade there. Probably can't tell from the video, but uh, my workshop has lots and lots of lighting. So there's LED lights back here. There's a big um, LED fixture above us. There's LED lights from behind us, and this thing is applying noticeably more light than all of that. Um, so yeah, it's it's really giving off a lot of light and I kind of like that. So here is the resistive load that I built. Um, let me show you the front panel. The front panel's got two banana jacks for the uh, power going into it. Um, I made them red and black, but this is really not, uh, this device doesn't have a polarity, so be anything. Um, and then four switches that let you turn resistors on and off. Um, inside of it we've got four resistors. These are big power resistors that I got on eBay. Um, there's various sellers that sell these things. These are 50 ohm resistors, and what I bought was a, a 1, a 2, a 4.7, and a 10. I was kind of going for 1, 2, 5, 10, which gets you a pretty good range of being able to mix things. Kind of based a little bit on what availability I could get on eBay, because I wanted to get these things cheap. And You want them cheap, get them on eBay. We've also got a set of thermal switches. These thermal switches are 150 degrees Celsius thermal switches. 
and I glued them with thermal adhesive to each resistor. Now, as I found since trying this thing out, I really didn't need four of them. I could have just put one of them mounted to the case or mounted to any resistor uh, because the heat transfers really well from these resistors to the metal case. But I didn't know that at the time, so I glued one to each one. Uh, the other thing I found out is that 150 is pretty high. Um, I put 30 watt load in this. I could not get anywhere near 150 degrees Celsius. Um, again, I think that's because of the heat dissipation in the case. Uh, when I tried to put 30 watts through um, one of these things just sitting on my bench, not mounted to a case, um, it got pretty hot pretty quickly. Um, I measured it about three, 400 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, burned my fingers. Um, so that, that's what kind of prompted me to put the, the safety cutoffs in in the first place. But, you know, this, this case really does dissipate heat pretty well for just, you know, an aluminum case. Yeah, so there's just not that much to this. I use silicone wire. Um, this is really thick, insulated, 14-gauge wire with very fine strands. It's kind of difficult to solder it with all those fine strands because um, they like to kind of wiggle off. But, yeah, this is a very simple thing that you can, you can build yourself, and you'll give yourself a decent resistive uh, load. Um, you do have a choice whether you want to put the resistors in parallel or in series. A typical decade resistor box, I think you'd put them in series. Uh, but I wanted this to be a load, and I think just the way you approach the math, um, a load makes more sense uh, to put in parallel because then you can just, every time you flip a switch on, you add another load to, to the pile of loads. So I printed this handy chart up and put it on the top. Um, so, I mean, for example, if we go down to 5 volts, you flip on the first switch, it's the 1 ohm resistor, you'll get 5 amps. Flip on the second switch, you've got 2.5 amps, so put them, two of them on together, you've got 7.5 amps. Okay, here is a schematic of the constant voltage, constant current power supply using an LM2576 switching regulator. As I mentioned before, I've already done a very long video on this um, on a whiteboard designing the circuit back when I first implemented this a couple years ago. Um, so I'm not going to go into it in that great of a detail, um, but let me just show, just for people who haven't watched that video, some of the basics of the circuit. So over here, this here, is your basic LM2576 circuit right out of the LM2576 data sheet. Um, it might look a little bit complicated, but that's only because I put um, several alternative footprints. So for example, here is the primary inductor, but I wanted to be able to choose two different um, inductor footprints, so there's a couple extra footprints in parallel. Similarly, over here on the, on the uh, feedback resistor, I've got several different options uh, for a 10-turn pot, um, for a fixed resistor there and there, um, to solder it straight across in case you're using one of the fixed voltage LM2576s. Um, so I've kind of incorporated footprints to cover every conceivable thing you'd need. Um, coming into the LM2576, uh, let's see which one of these is the input. Over here is the input. Input jack. the input jack and the power switch. So we come in through a barrel jack and there's a rocker switch. Um, over here on the output side of the LM2576 we have the current sense resistor. Um, so we need to be able to measure the amount of current that this thing's putting out. So one way to do that is with a 1 ohm resistor. So if you put the, the power coming out of the regulator into a 1 ohm resistor, uh, by Ohm's law, you know that if you measure 1 volt across that resistor and it's 1 ohms, that means 1 amp is flowing through it. If you measured half a volt across a 1 ohm resistor, you'd know half an amp is going through it. So it's very easy to measure voltage. Uh, through that resistor. Now the reason I have many resistors in parallel is sometimes it's easier to get precision resistors to get 10 
of them that are a slightly higher value at a much lower wattage than one big wattage low value resistor. It just depends on what you have on hand. So in this case, you put 10, um, 10 ohm resistors together and you will get, because they're all in parallel, you get a one ohm resistor that gives you that um, one volt across one ohm is one amp. Measuring between these two sense pins will tell you how much current is flowing out of this circuit. Uh, we can ignore that zener, I never used it. Then over here we have a filter. Um, this is out of the LM2576 data sheet. It says if you want to get the ripple current down, you put this little inductor capacitor filter in place. Um, again, I went with two inductor footprints. Um, I didn't actually use this um, in this project. As you will see, I left it unpopulated and just put a jumper across and then skipped the capacitor. This would be good if you want a precision power supply with low ripple. I really didn't care in this case. Um, so that's the main current um, path, you know, power in here, through there, through the sense resistor, out here, and then we go out some headers uh, to whatever we want to plug in. Now for the um, current limiting part, what we've got here is we've got this TL272 op amp. So the first stage here is a differential amplifier. Um, so what it does, this is an op amp, and it takes the sense low and sense high, we call that's the other two opposite sides of the um, current sense resistor, and it measures the voltage difference across them. So if you go into you know your op amp stuff on the web, you will learn how to make a differential amplifier out of an op amp. Just basically the selection of these resistors here will make it tell you the voltage difference between there and there. Um, so what we have here, at this point right here, we will have a zero to, to one volt and what that will mean is zero to one amp. So we've taken that one volt difference across there, we've run it through the difference amplifier, and we will now get a zero to one volt signal out of there. And then what we have here is a simple sort of comparator where we're going to compare that zero to one volt signal against a current set potentiometer. So down here is the potentiometer that the user is going to set on the panel to give it a voltage between zero and one volt. Up here we've got the zero to one volt signal coming out of the differential amplifier and if this one up here is greater than this one down here then this op amp is going to put out a voltage and this voltage will go through this diode it happens to be an LED but it doesn't need to be an LED it could just be a diode which will go into the feedback pin which is up here so the way this LM2576 works, um, if you read the data sheet, it's always looking for a signal on this feedback pin. And anytime this signal exceeds like 1.25 volts, it shuts off regulation. That's how it manages the voltage output. Now that feedback is normally coming from a resistor divider from your output voltage. That's how you'd normally wire up an LM2576. But because we've thrown this diode into it, what we're also doing is we're saying whenever this op amp um, rigged up as a comparator down here, whenever it senses that we are in over current situation, to put voltage out there, it will drive that feedback pin above 1.25 volts and that will cause uh, the regulator to shut down. And that's, you know, that's basically it to the circuit. We've got a little bit of here, which is the op amp power. So it turns out that we need some power for the op amp um, and the way to do that is I just used a simple Zener um, regulator, you know, with a uh, 
current limiting resistance and a zener and a couple filter caps. That gives you a stable supply for that op amp. So here is the completed board. Um, we have the LM2576 regulator there. We've got the op amp over here. Um, 10 10 ohm resistors um, forming the current sense. Uh, the inductor. Um, the second stage filtering inductor I didn't use. I just wired that one across. Um, the big uh, diode for the switching power supply, a potentiometer to adjust the voltage output, um, input capacitor, we've got output capacitor, um, the LED here that lights as part of the current limiting circuit, um, a switch with a built-in LED for the power on, 10K potentiometer, um, a couple plugs out the back to run the wires into, um, you know, a couple goofs on the board. You know, I put the uh, capacitor too close to the resistors, kind of tight there. If I had this to do over again, maybe I would think a little bit more about this current sense and maybe use a 0.1 ohm instead of a 1 ohm um, series of resistors. Because these do actually get hot when running a high load. Um, so I think, you know, I could put 10 ones um, in parallel um, and get 0.1 then maybe adjust the gain on the op amp to multiply that by 10, something like that. Okay, so now let's uh, try this module out and see how it works. So right now I've got it hooked up. The power is coming from my uh, bench supply over here. I've got 15 volts, um, current limited to around 3 amps. So 15 volts going in. Uh, I set the potentiometer for around 12 volts, so we've got 12.1 volts coming out. I usually like to set the voltage just a little bit above what I actually want, you know, to make up for some cable losses because any device plugged into here is going to have resistance that the cables can drop a little bit. So I kind of set the trimmer for 12.10. Uh, plus that gives us a little bit of um, leeway should there be some thermal changes and should the voltage drop, you know, due to the resistors, temperature changing and stuff in there. So 12.10, that's, that's working well. Um, of course we can turn it off, turn it back on, LED lights up. Um, it's currently pulling 21 milliamps over here. Um, some of that is uh, probably going to light that LED, some may be um, losses in the regulator. I'm going to see if that little voltage in the LED is enough to trip the current limiter. Bring it all the way down. Yep, so the light came on, that means it's uh, current limiting. So we did actually trip the current limiter just by that little LED. Bring it up. Current limiting is coming off. Yeah, and we've got our full 12 volts again. Let me run it all the way out. Um, now let's try putting some load on it and see what it is. Now I know from my chart up here that... Um, this rightmost switch at 12 volts is going to be 1.2 amps. Um, so I'm going to turn that on. Um, we've seen the voltage drop a little bit due to um, resistance in these cables um, and these cables. Um, so we're down to 11.91 volts. Pulling about 1.175 amps here in the input, which is pretty close to the 1.2 we expected to get out of the output. Um, you know, in a perfect regulator, you'd expect to pull, I think, less here than you're putting out there because we're going from 15 down to 12. But there is some efficiency losses in the regulator, and these there is these uh, resistors here, and there's going to be a little bit of a drop in those resistors. So that seems uh, like everything's working fine. If we turn on the current limiter, yeah, see, it's starting to current limit. The voltage is dropping, and the little LED there gets brighter as it limits more current. So there, um, that seems to be working. Um, now let's check um, amperage in the output. So I'll just reconfigure this a little bit. Switch my meter over here to... There's over there, milliamps, um, DC. One of these over here. And uh, this 
this one I can move over to there, this one to there. So we've got 1.152 amps of DC, which is about, you know, we expected to get about 1.2 amps on the resistive load, so that's kind of in the ballpark. If we turn our current limiter down, um, it's limiting the current as expected. And it seems to be relatively smooth. Back up to full range, 1.15. Okay, so we're drawing the 1. Um, 1.5 amps. Let's try switching on more load and see what happens. So we'll switch on, switch that one off, switch this one on. Okay, this here, um, based on my charts, is this will draw at 12 volts, this will draw 2.6 amps. So certainly we're current limiting. Um, we're actually limiting at the maximum that my potentiometer goes because I set this my goal was to get around 1.4 amps. I've got 1.3 full range. Bringing this down. Again, it's uh, working smoothly throughout the range. So this shows us that our maximum current limit is about 1.3 amps. I um, also wanted to check and see if there's any oscillation uh, due to this op amp and its sensing. So I'm going to put the oscilloscope on it. Let me go get the oscilloscope out. Okay, so I've got the oscilloscope hooked up. It's hooked up over here at the load, so it's across the output of the uh, board so that we can see what's going on with ripple and such coming out. Uh, it's currently AC coupled. Uh, what do we got? 500 millivolts per division. Um, the load is off. Uh, and we're getting, uh, what is this, about 60 millivolts of ripple. I can run this through the various time scales just to see if we pick up any noise in any other scales and there's really there's there's not much going on here let's crank it back there into the middle um, so let's switch on the 10 ohm resistor it's about 1.2 amps of load we can see there you know we're reading about 1.15 on the meter um, and we still have pretty much nothing going on here. We've still got the 60 millivolts peak to peak. It's just no... Uh, nothing to see there, but I think as soon as we start current limiting something will happen. So I'm going to turn the current limit potentiometer. There we go. It's interesting that it kind of gives me that little burst. It's like it needs a second to settle. Okay, let's look. Okay, here we go. There's there is um, some ripple now in the output. So we've got 380 millivolts, and I think that is you know just some some oscillation going on in you know this op amp current sense um, circuit you know this thing senses a load shuts the regulator down um, the load drops turns the regulator back on so there's going to be some oscillation inside that circuit and I think that's that's what we're seeing here so uh, the good news is it's relatively minor it's only 380 millivolts and the frequency is pretty high it's about 9 kilohertz okay here is the base uh, for the lamp so I remixed this from the original one I found on Thingiverse to add this sort of junction box here where I can stick my circuit board in. Um, had a few issues. So one of the things that happened, you probably can't see it, um, but it did actually warp in along the two vertical edges on both sides. It kind of pinched the circuit board, made it kind of hard to fit. Um, I also kind of screwed up these hole cutouts um, I needed to kind of dremel them back a little bit to accommodate these two plugs that I put in the back. Um, and then finally, uh, this one plug sticks out a little bit, um, so I had to kind of grind the sidewall a little bit so that that plug will fit in there. Um, I actually kind of hit the front of this with the 
the collet on the uh, Dremel. Kind of put a little bit of a gouge into it. That's a little bit unfortunate. Um, I may end up reprinting this. Um, we'll have to see. Another thing I'd probably do different if I had it to do over again. Um, these mounting holes in the back. I designed those so that screws, um, I don't have them handy, but screws would come in through the back side um, because that's how I designed my other boxes for power supplies. But it's not real convenient to get into the back of here with a screwdriver. Um, so maybe next time I would put uh, like heat set inserts or something in there. So yeah, a little bit, uh, if, I, if I do a respin of this, a little bit of work I'll put into maybe making this box a little bigger. Um, getting these cutouts in the right place, um, accommodating for the uh, where the plug sticks out there, and putting in some heat set inserts. So the other thing I changed in the uh, the model um, that I found on Thingiverse was I redid the base. Uh, so the base, um, the original model had it printed in TPU, which is kind of a flexible filament. Um, I don't have any TPU. Um, I've never printed in TPU, so I didn't really want to try. Um, so I modified the base with these screws here that go through it um, and heat set inserts on the inside for the screw to screw into. The screw just kind of inserts from the outside. And then I took and I drilled some holes in here to fit so that we can plop that on there, run the screw, it'll hold the base on. Um, I'll put these remix files up on Thingiverse for anyone who wants to do this uh, the way I did it. Um, that does actually work good with a fairly well secured base. So let's put this lamp together. First I'm going to take and put the, uh, the board in here. Like so. Then we can plug in the power going in. Maybe it would be handy to actually put those standoffs in place first. Uh, we're going to have those sitting around here someplace. There we go, standoffs. As I said earlier, this is really going to be a pain to deal with. How I came up with uh, putting these screws in through the back. Probably the first thing I will correct on a respin of this is to put. Um, heat set inserts in instead. Probably can't see it super well with the lighting and with my hand in here, but I'm just I'm using a screwdriver bit to kind of twist these screws in through the back. In fact, I'm not even sure if I'm going to put all four of them in. I may just try to do three. That one even gonna fit? Yeah, that one will fit up there. It's gonna be really an unpleasant trying to get it into place. Yeah, I think for now, given I may just reprint this case anyway, I think two screws is sufficient. We'll put the other two up here so they kind of look like there's screws in there, but they won't actually be secured into anything. Yeah, see now we're running into this issue with the warpage. Um, the warpage on that front plate, so I'm gonna have to gonna have to take and grind this a little bit. So this just shows how good it is to design things so that you do have some slop in them. I think we'll be able to just about get it now. Grind just a hair more off of it. Switching the knobs work. Are these screws going to be long enough? Maybe they will. Yeah. Perhaps not the prettiest thing in the world but it is functional. Um, so now we can hook up the power going in. Got him? And then we need the actual lamp. 
There's the lamp. I mean, he's really big. Really big. Actually, I wanted to put some cap on tape in here. So these joints on the lamp, um, I think they're a little bit too loose given the weight of the lamp. So what I've been doing is I've been wrapping some Kapton tape around in there. And that stiffens it up a little bit just by taking out some more gap. Um, I don't know if that was a problem with the original um, design of these things. Or maybe they were just never intended to support this amount of weight. Um, these are printed in PETG. I know a lot of people print in PLA. Maybe the PLA um, has a slightly different property. Maybe it fits a little tighter. Don't know, but this is what I've been doing. Put some Kapton tape in it. I made the power um, wire very long in case I ever decide to add more segments to the lamp. So there we've got the lamp mounted. Go down here. See if we can get the power wire plugged in. Now the final thing we need to do is put the base plate on, but we need to add some ballast. We just need to apply the base plate. We need to get it on here straight. Using my uh, Weha precision screwdrivers. Thread certs work uh, really good. Um, I'm going to use thread certs in a lot more projects now that I find out how easy they are. Okay. Assembled. Let's get some power to it. Okay, turn on my bench supply. Everything goes as planned. This should light up. There, we have light. Bright to dim. Angle up. So you can see the lamp. That is full brightness, and that's dimmed. So yeah, um, this is working just perfectly. I'm just running the dial back and forth. It's doing exactly what I wanted. Um, I don't know if it's uh, readily apparent um, just how bright this thing is, but this light is, it is really bright. Um, so I've got LED fixtures here and here. I've got big LED lights behind us. I've got LED lights above the workbench. And this thing is giving off noticeably more light than all the other light in the room combined. So this is going to work out as an excellent work light. Okay, bonus material time. So after assembling the whole lamp, I really wasn't happy with how much heat was coming off of those sense resistors. I measured them at about 220 degrees Fahrenheit. And I figured there to be about a watt and a half, two watts being dissipated through them. And I thought, well, that's, that's just kind of dumb to be dissipating a bunch of energy into a resistor on this uh, constant current power supply. So I did go back and change these 10 ohm resistors out for 1 ohm, so that 10 of them together in parallel is a 0.1 ohm resistor. And then I upped the gain on the op amp uh, from, from Unity Gain. Um, all the way up to a times 10 gain. So an amp and a half across the uh, resistors would measure 0.15 volts. The op amp will multiply that to 1.5 volts and then compare it to the potentiometer as before. Um, so I've got everything hooked back up. I wanted to check the uh, you know oscillation and stuff and make sure it behaves the way we expect it to. Um, let's crank the all the way up. So right now we have no load on it. Everything is good and steady. I'll put a load on it. So we got a little bit of ripple there, about 100 millivolts. Uh, we've not engaged the um, current limit yet. So let's turn the current limiting on. 
So here's that same uh, sawtooth waveform we had before. There's a little more ripple. We're up to 440 millivolts, whereas before I think we had 380 millivolts. You know, maybe there's a little more noise in the um, circuit since we're dealing with smaller voltages, or maybe there's a little more lag or something. Um, I don't really know, but I think it's it's really within specifications for what I wanted. Uh, so I'm happy, and I think this is going to keep the circuit running much cooler and much more efficient uh, than back when I had that uh, larger uh, value sense resistor in there. be interesting to see if a person could go all the way down to 0.01 ohms. Right now we're at 0.1. You know, 0.01 sense resistor would be even less current, but more amplification, more noise. So maybe I'll look into that in the future. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.